Hey, everybody, this is Ramon Ray, founder of SmartHustle.com. Thanks for joining me for what I think, what I know is going to be another exciting podcast discussion. If you're hearing the sound of my voice, reading this article, watching this video, please share it, comment, let us know you're listening. Uh, let us know that it's helping you and your business. And you can find interviews like this at SmartHustle.com, SmartHustle.com slash podcast. We are here to inspire you uh, and educate you to start and grow your business. Praval Singh is here with us today with Zoho. Thank you, Praval, for being here today. Uh, if you don't watch, if you're not watching his, if I can say this publicly, his IG feed, he has some really good pictures and images there uh, as well. But Praval, welcome. Thanks for being here. And feel free to share with us a little bit about yourself and, uh, and your role at Zoho. And for those who don't know, even tell us a bit about Zoho. Introduce yourself a bit. Thank you so much, Ramon. Thanks for having me. Good to see you again. Indeed. Uh, uh, I'm the VP of marketing at Zoho. I've been around for over eight years. Uh, I look at all things uh, brand for Zoho. And I also look at uh, Zoho's growth in India as a region. And uh, for those of you who've not heard of Zoho before, we are a technology company that creates more than just business software. But essentially, uh, we offer technology and software that we believe uh, businesses would need uh, on their on their everything that they do to, to run their business for sure. So all the way from sales and marketing to accounting, uh, HR, back office, everything that you potentially would need to run a business from a software standpoint, from a technology standpoint, is what we create, ship, deliver to customers around the world. Absolutely. And what's interesting about this discussion, uh, Praval, is we won't get into the speeds and feeds of Zoho, which you know, we can do, and I know you can do that very well, but I'm excited to talk this this thing, I think, which you all call Zoho, Zoho economics or Zohonomics, correct me on that term? Zohonomics. Zohonomics, yes, which is very interesting. And I've seen it up close. As you know, I've I've uh, been able to interview, been around, observe the, the co-founder of Zoho, Sridhar, for a long time, uh, his, his deputy, as it were, Raju, and many others in the team. And so I think this aspect of Zohonomics is, is very interesting. And I'll just let you unpack it, Praval. I have a few questions, but I think, why don't you start and just tell us, what does this mean and why is it special? Um, and and, and let, let me say this in the context before you even tell me. I'm going to push back before you even answer. Every company feeds homeless people. I mean, you know, come on. Every company gives a few million dollars a year to the charities around the world. So in that context, help us also understand why is it special. Yeah, you're right, Ramon. Uh, a lot of companies do charity, do uh, what they call CSR, you know, as part of their responsibility or, or, you know, for us, it's a little different and yeah. it's not different today. It's been different since the inception of the company 25 years ago, right? And what we, what we call Zohonomics is essential, uh, is essentially spiritual economics, right? I mean, if I, if I distill it down further, it's, it's based on just three core pillars or principles, right? It is uh, balance, mm. symmetry, and harmony, right? Now, in terms of everything, in terms of people, we believe uh, in prioritizing people over profits. Mm. Uh, we believe in prioritizing education or learning over credentials, right? And we believe in a good quality of life for our colleagues at Zoho, mm -hmm. right? We believe if these things are in place, okay, everything else sort of starts to take care of itself over right. time, right? And that's the principle of, of running the business that's, that's been around with us for over two decades now, mm -hmm. right? Now, you may wonder why is it getting popular now, right? right. Well, a couple of reasons for that. One, it's not that we have not spoken about it. You've, you've, you've known us for a while. You've sure. seen this uh, surface up in our events, in our discussions, in our content that we create, in, in the examples that we share from within the company, uh, which includes people uh, who've been with the company for over two decades. Right. For example, today, um, we have over 100 colleagues who've been with the company for two decades. Wow. Right? Uh, over a thousand of them who have been in the company for over 10 years. That's now lot. that's not, that's not very usual, uh, not just in, in, in Silicon Valley, but globally, right? right. That's, that's not an average uh, work lifespan of a typical employee at a company, today, right? So now you may wonder why does it really happen, right? It all falls back to, to the zoonomics principles that I spoke about, 
right? It's because we prioritize people over profits and, and we like to give them a good quality of life and, and focus on focus on other things and not just profits, not right. just, uh, and, and there are few things that actually enable us to do that, right? And, and that includes us being privately held since yeah. the beginning, right? Uh, and, and we like to uh, believe that when you take care of employees, you know, they take care of, of their communities that they are, they are in. Yes. When you nurture talent locally, good things happen. And for us, thankfully, that's the case. That's how we've grown in the last uh, two and a half decades. And that is what we plan to do going forward. You know? Now, some companies may call it CSR, like you said, some companies may call it like doing something for or, sure. or giving back to the society. This is our way of doing it. And that's how we've, we've been doing it for, for over two decades. I love that. It's powerful. Let's let's talk about maybe go through some of these points here step by step. Talking about the private held thing, I know is a very big thing. Um, I have the the U.S. context. You have a more global view of it, but and I so I want to learn what, what what do you miss out by not going privately? And maybe it's not a fair question. I mean, by not going publicly, maybe you're not missing out. Kind of like me asking one of my friends, "What are you missing out by being vegetarian?" <laughs> Meaning they're like, "Maybe what are you missing out by?" <laughs> So it's one of those questions, but what do you, in America, especially it's a big thing, every startup, Praval, has to go public. They want VC money. It's like a badge of honor. I'm, I'm in debt and I'm VC backed. Yay. So, you know, what's, what do you think is missing or, or, or what's the advantage? Can you talk about that philosophy of privately held, but you're still a successful company versus every startup guy and gal who drinks pizza, who eats pizza and beer wants to go public. What's up with that? I think uh, that's a good question. And uh, I've been at Zoho for uh, over eight years. Sure. And if I look back, you know, what has made me stick around for, for, for this time, I think, uh, and if I attribute that to, to the company being privately held, mm. I think it all comes down to, you know, the long-term investment in people that we do, you know, in the sense, uh, you know, this gives us an opportunity to bring in our true self outside, right? Each one of us are different. We come from different backgrounds. Uh, we each uh, may speak different languages across different countries, all of mm -hmm. that, right? But the opportunity to be truly ourselves when we connect with colleagues and we connect with customers, you know, all that I think is possible because we don't have this, we're not trying to chase a target or a goal for every quarter or every year. We're not trying to look at a, a 5x or a 10x ROI for someone who is invested in the company, right? Yeah. When you have all of that out of the equation, what you're doing as a company is essentially embracing talent. Yeah. And, and we do it in different ways, all the way from uh, bringing on students into the Zoho School of Learning. Mm -hmm. I can talk about that as well. Uh, and all the way from that to retaining employees and colleagues for over two decades, like I said, mm -hmm. right? All this is possible when you're not trying to chase a goal every quarter, every every year, right? Yeah. So that long-term investment is one thing. The second thing uh, from an advantage perspective is the decision of doing the business in a certain way. For example, uh, our focus on privacy. Mm -hmm. We've spoken about that previously. Yes. And, and it's not just, uh, that is not just a, a web page or a message or a slogan for us, right? <laughs> For us, it's how we do business, right? It's, for us, it's how we prioritize customer data in the sense, uh, for example, choosing not to show ads within our products right. or, or choosing not to sell or use customer data to make money. Which right? I must say maybe, is very lucrative yeah. in the ads and you could do it. It's a free product at one, at one level. You could say, great, up to three users, whatever for free, we're gonna show ads like everybody else does. So. You yeah. could within your right to do so. And at 60 million users, that is that is definitely lucrative for yeah. many companies, I would say. That's a whole but advertising like said, network. That's a whole uh, that's a whole <laughs> revenue absolutely. stream. Absolutely. But because like I said, it's the DNA that, that's been anti advertisement sure. in the product. And that's the mindset. And you may feel and one may feel that okay, we look we're leaving money on the table by, sure. by yeah. not doing this. Sure we are. Right. But we know that in the long term, this is going to help us because that builds trust. And that is the reason not just employees, but our partners and our customers have been with us for so long. Right? Yeah. They see value in, in, of course, our products and software and services. 
but they also see that this is the company the kind of company we would like to do business with yes right? and that's more important to us and i would say we are grateful and blessed to be able to uh sort of run a sustainable business yep. profitable business year on year and grow at a decent rate without having to worry too much about uh any exits or any acquisitions yep. or any of that so that gives a lot of i would say mental bandwidth for us to operate in certain ways for us yep. to innovate you know so privacy is like that the next bit is you know trying to you know do business in a different way let me let me give an example please how many companies today in the saas world choose to build their own data centers right okay and it's not just because because we can so we are no it's beyond that right we we've, we've been running our own data centers for so many years now right well sure it includes uh, a huge capex at the beginning right uh but we've built that expertise that know how over these years to to run data centers multiple data centers around the world and we believe that by owning the entire stack mm-hmm. the experience stack all the way you know from the application right. uh, you know that our users use to where their data sits you know where do we store that data who owns that data which is customers all that is possible because of this long term thinking of you know if a company wants to exit in few years right investing in a data center might not even occur to them which mm. is obviously i mean right. you know and there is nothing wrong with that mind so that's just different way of doing business right for them that makes sense because they have an investment they got to get an roi someone has to make an exit make money and probably move on to do something else right the way this company runs is just different right we are in the business of doing this you know not to run away from this sure you know sure. so that's the philosophy i mean i got it yeah some no, people understand. some people agree with it some people don't but that's what it is yeah <laughs> and okay I like you saying hey take it or leave it. And Praval if you were educating or talking to, you know, Harvard MBAs or 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 wherever they are in the world, India, China, wherever in the world, would you say that I guess what I'm trying to understand would you would you advise them even to consider doing it this way? Would you say hey, this is how we're doing it. You may want to consider building your business no debt, building your business light, lean. People say the word lean, but yet they kind of grow non-lean. Would you advise them or would you say no, okay, from what I've heard for you guys, go public get vc money if you understand what i'm trying to ask uh you know some things in life i think we can hold a stake in the ground and say i think everybody should try it some things we may say no it's just for us if that's a fair question it may not be a fair question but would you advise other young people who are building businesses to to consider this route maybe is that something that you would i think uh one thing that i would like to bring in into this conversation is see there are different the different forces that come into play and depending on the kind of business you're running sure if today uh we are if if today this was not zoho and we were a small startup starting something in the yes. b2c world right mm-hmm. uh, looking at the market forces today looking at uh, the way companies are investing into sales and marketing essentially advertising right uh it becomes very hard you know to to sort of outshine everybody else or even come to the surface and 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 for people to know you right it's much harder in a b2c world today right, right than it was back in the past in b2b and also because we as zoho corp you know we've been even before zoho.com the the yeah. saas software suite was born uh we were in business uh with our manage engine line of right. products right which so it's not that we started from zero right we we were making money we were doing right. running a business just that we chose to sort of start this new uh saas software suite sure. division uh about 15 16 years ago and then we kept investing in it we yeah. kept growing it and we kept pumping back the money that we made from subscriptions from our customers into yeah. the business right that's how we grew and it took us it took us 15 years to sort of build zoho.com where it is today right yeah. now one may wonder that if if i want a five year 10 year exit you know i want to grow faster i sure. want to put in more money in advertising and marketing and 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 you know i need i need more billboards on on 101 or or whatever right yeah. now if you want that right and you want it early in your in your business right there's no other way but you you got to 
bring money from somewhere. Yeah. Right. Now, now I think, and that's sort of the, the traditional route today. Right? Yeah. And that's also because there's a lot of money being raised, money being invested in this market today, right? For, for different global economic conditions and reasons today, right? Yeah. So there's a lot of money being pumped in into companies and a lot of young entrepreneurs want to leverage that to build a business, sure. which is their way of doing it. Absolutely. Right? Uh, for us, it's just been different. It's, it's, yeah. And as a company, we have survived uh, different ups and downs, uh, you know, from a market perspective, be it the dot com or, 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 you know, all these yeah. bursts we have seen, we have, we have come out of these and, and we've done fairly well over yeah. these years, right? And what I'm hearing you say, Praval, what I'm hearing, you let me know if I'm, if I'm mischaracterizing, but I'm hearing you say possibly an idea I have is that if you're a mature company today, you're generating great cash, you don't have to feel the pressure of, VC, public and exit, there's another way to consider. Meaning that may be what I'm hearing is that, you know, you're 30 years old, you have a $5 million company, keep growing it and, and, and think of how to, a legacy. That's kind of maybe what I'm hearing is that there's another way that can be done if you choose to go that route. That's kind of what I'm Yeah, hearing. and there are people who are doing it. I mean, Absolutely. I, I, I don't mean to sound that we are the only ones doing it radically sure. different. No, there are other companies that have grown, built, have been built and are running profitably the same way. Sure. Just that there are fewer companies operating this way because it, this is sort of a long-term investment that, that you want to put into. Absolutely. Right? Uh, you, we've, in this 25 years of being in business, we have seen companies go, uh, die, become into billion dollar businesses. Sure. We've seen it all, right? From, 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 from being in the, in the market and offering and competing in the same market as other, some of these companies. We've seen companies come uh, you know, do a lot of marketing, build good products, and then get acquired, get shelved. You know, all of that happens in the same world that we all live in, right? Sure. I think if, and this has been asked before, that if we were to do it differently, if we were to go back and do it differently, would we do it differently? But And the answer has been no. Sure. Because there are no regrets, no complaints. Uh, you know, we're not sorry for not taking money to, do, to run a business. You know, sure. it's, 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 and it's just the, the, the DNA of the company, the culture, the mindset that we have had, uh, our values and convictions, yeah. I, and the products, of course, I think that's led to customers trusting us with their business and, yeah. and yeah, us, us growing the way we've, we've grown so far. I appreciate that. And help us understand if you can remember if there's, and I don't need names or real examples, but when you talk about the people, what I'm trying to ask is that, you know, many companies have the proverbial foosball table, cereal in the counter, you know, especially back in the dot-com high, you know, those type of things. Is that a similar way of Zoho way or is there something different? Is there any example you can give where here's what we mean when we say we care about people? Is there any any um, thing besides the, you know, typical bean bag in the office and we let you bring your dogs to work? Okay, many people, companies are, <laughs> are aware of those things. Any other, is, is there anything else that comes to mind for you? that maybe shines a bit different when you think of your people and, and your, your team at Zoho? Interesting that you brought it up. Uh, you know, in fact, meals in the office and pantry area and, and all of that, you know, including a uh, place to take a nap if, you, if you're really uh, feeling like taking one. Sure. Right? All of this we've always had. Just that we don't market these things, you know. You would uh, not find it on our websites, you know. You, uh, <laughs> you would not see it like, People, we don't want all the way from getting the kind of machine that they need or, or laptops or mobile phones or whatever it takes to, yeah. to get work done, right? To not having a, a, a dress code in the office in the mm -hmm. sense you don't have to wear this, which most tech companies they don't anyway. Sure. You know, to, to pantries and, and coffee and, and, you know, all that. We've had all this for, for as long as I remember. Right. Mm -hmm. Just that we, we, this is not the reason why we want people to join us. Right. This is like, oh, by the way, this is all anyway there. Right. That's our mindset when we hire people. Uh, now, if you talk about then what is it that we advertise uh, from a talent acquisition perspective? Mm -hmm. Right. Well, that is pretty much nothing. That's just who we are. That's just about our culture. The fact that people stick with us for so long, be customers, partners, employees, uh, it's the whole zoonomics way of running business is what we talk about, yes. right? Uh, it's not materialistic items and things that, oh, you get all meals in the day in the office. Well, fine, you do get that, but don't come for that, right? right? So this is sort of 
a narrative that we were very cautious about and, and we took it that way, right? That we, we don't want to advertise. So HR shouldn't be a marketing function. Mm. HR is an HR function, you know? Our HR team's role, uh, and it's a big task, is to take care of employees, right? Listen to them, their concerns, and, and, and any requests that they may have, and, and uh, you know, do the allocation of people in sure. different teams the way it should be. All that is what they limit themselves to largely, right? Sure, there is an opening for a role that we have. Sure, we'll talk about it on social media, mm -hmm. right? Because we want people to know that's fine. Sure. But none of that, none of none of the perks and, and, and benefits and, and, you know, we're not trying to shy away from that, just that yes. we don't believe that's the right narrative to, to attract talent, right? The right narrative there is, taking care of employees in terms of how we can help them, giving them good growth, giving them the opportunity to learn and grow, giving them the opportunity to make mistakes, right? Giving them yes. to oppor the opportunity to, to take a second chance, yeah. right? I mean, you, you, there are so many stories of how someone joined in the company as a developer, but over time she realized that she has passion in designing, mm. right? The company makes it possible for people to have those kind of uh, you know, transitions within the career. Right, mm -hmm. which is not so common in a lot of other companies that I've seen. Right. right, so these are the kind of call them perks, call them privileges, call them whatever. Right, yeah, but yeah. that's the reality. We believe in in nurturing talent, and uh, we believe in building trust. And over time, if someone signs up for a job or a role, and over and realizes that that's not what she wants to do, right, we give them the opportunity to do something else. Yeah, right. That's the kind of freedom and flexibility that make people stay for as as many years as they do. So that's sure. what. That's it what sounds is, kind of I like um, if I were, to, if you and I were to get married and we said, "Hey, by the way, we brush our teeth. We're the guys who brush our teeth." It's like, yeah. Yeah. why are you advertising it? So that's what I'm hearing you say. You know, it's kind of like, yeah. no, it's pretty yeah. basic for us. Um, yeah. uh, this has been such a great discussion, Praval. One thing I do want to touch on is the aspect of no college degrees. Um, I know that the, the, going back to DNA of the company. You know, I think in the U.S. companies, uh, U.S. birthed companies, at least, you know, it's it's slowly emerging that. But for years, it's been everybody pretty much have to have a four-year bachelor's, po potentially even a two-year master's degree, to make some decent money or to be noticed to get through the hiring algorithm. You know, so all the monsters.com and Indeed.coms can can filter you through. Um, at Zoho, I know that that's not such an emphasis. You want good people, but you're not very. What's the degree? Did you go to Harvard? Did you go to Yale? Tell us about that. Yeah, and, and that sort of uh, brings me to, to the point I mentioned, the Zoho Schools of Learning, right? Mm -hmm. That's the entity. It was earlier called Zoho University. Right. We now call it Zoho Schools of Learning. Now, it's been, this program has been on for over a decade where we incubate uh, students in India uh, from 10 plus 2 and 10 plus 3, which is after their their high school and, and, and uh, plus two and plus three when they complete that. And we train them essentially on skills that we believe are important in their daily lives, right? Which is communication, written, verbal, uh, logical thinking, programming, things like that, right? And then there are of course a lot of courses that, that are available on the internet and, and a lot of handholding on, on things in the first year. In the second year, we, uh, you know, incubate them put them in an internship program of sorts with one of the teams within the company. So there's a lot of on the job learning for them as well, right? Now, today, over 10% of our colleagues in the company, we are about 10,000 people now. So over 1,000 colleagues of mine are from this group of students that we incubated in the last 10 years, right? Wow. Right, and, and once they join the team, you know, in a few years, they're at par with everybody else who's come from the traditional, uh, uh, you know, schools, be it B schools, engineering schools, any of that, right? Now, we're not against this or that, right? Sure. We, we continue to hire people from, from uh, all, all, in all ways, right? Whether they're coming from a college, a university, or whether joining us through this ZSL, you know, but what we've seen is, you know, by getting these kids early on, now, they have a lot of energy, enthusiasm, passion to learn, right? We're able to educate them in things that are critical, sort of life skills, work skills, things like that, right? And, and they do phenomenally well. In fact, many of them are today leading teams within Zoho, right? Now, all this today might sound cool, right? 
But back when it started, you know, it wasn't cool. I remember uh, our teams that managed this initiative. Uh, they've, they've shared how difficult it was early on to convince parents to get their kids, uh, you know, to join this program. Sure. Today, it's the other way around. We have this test that people, the kids give, there's a selection to, the, to that, and all of, all of that today happens. The whole, you know, the process of, right. of getting people on that program now. So this, again, if you see, you know, wouldn't have been possible if, I mean, if we were a traditional funded company. Do you think it was possible mm -hmm. if this company was funded by an investor who was looking for an exit in the next five years? Who wants to build a program like this, right? It's not easy. I'm not saying nobody would do it, but this is not, you know, this is not something that would have been so obvious. Sure. So things like these, you know, these are the subtle nuances here and there that you see within the company that make you believe that this company works differently. Sure. This company bets on people, on initiatives that a lot of other people might not, or they would pass, right? Uh, so yeah, that sort of has worked in our favor. And today there's, there's so much demand for, for this group of students who've come and learned sure. uh, with us. And today ZSL has three uh, branches, divisions. One is focused on business, uh, four of them actually, two on engineering and programming, one on business, and one on design, right? Mm. So that program itself has evolved over the years, right? So yeah, that's, that's, that's the Zoho it. Schools of Learning story. I love it. I'm curious, there's a lady, you may know the name, but her name is Kat Cole, K-A-T then C-O-L-E. She was the former president of Yum Brands, which I think is owned by, uh, uh, in the Auntie Annie's, it's a lot of the U.S. airports and big billion brands like that. Her story is that she was an executive at Hooters, the, you know, the restaurant chain, at the age of 26 years old. My point being, what I'm trying to ask is that it seems like the degree is not needed, but I'm curious, is the, is the person important? Is it harder for you to then find the right gem who may be leadership material or a good programmer without the paper of validation, notwithstanding Zoho schools, putting that aside, if that makes sense, because that paper is a way, there's Praval and Ramon. I don't know either. Ah, Praval has a degree from Harvard and an MBA. I, you know, he may be a nasty, mean person, but I'll just vote for him. If you understand what I'm just trying to bring up, is that, does that, does that make it harder for you all? Do you have to really identify the human, the person without paper, if that makes sense what I'm asking. Oh, you're right. And, and it's definitely hard to, to bring in uh, people who, who would end up into becoming a leadership uh, roles, right? And that's something not, you, you just can't predict that. Right. Just because someone went to a, a, a very good school doesn't really make them great managers, that's right? True. We've all seen that. We've all seen that in our careers, right? Uh, managing people has more to do with how you are as a person. That's right. Okay. Uh, the kind of empathy that you carry and how you look at people and, and how do you put them before you and things yeah. like that. Right. Now that I don't think a school can teach you. Right. right. A school can teach you a lot of other things. Definitely. Right. No, no disregard to that. Absolutely. Right. It teaches you so many things and, and how to organize yourself better, how to run a team, how to do a lot of other things with, yeah. with people around you. But who you are as a person, okay, with your family, with your friends, with your colleagues, that's not something a school can change, right? So how we've seen at Zoho, and that's another reason why we, we mostly hire, um, our colleagues are mostly brought on board early on when they're sure. fresh out of college or, or, you know, and what we've seen is they end up growing into leaders, yes. right? And, and now that when someone has spent four, five, seven, 10 years in the company, it becomes a lot easier to identify whether they are ready to take a leadership That's role, true. right? Versus us hiring someone with a lot of experience and, and giving them an upfront responsibility to lead a team, right? Yeah. That also happens, but that's much rare. That's often need-based. And right? you have to untrain a, them. <laughs> yeah, in you many to, ways. This, this is what we did at the 20 years of the company I was at. <laughs> right. We screamed that's, at our customers, well, wait a minute, whoa, 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 whoa. We don't do that here. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, that you 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 brought up a very good point, right? When 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 you work so many years at a company, yeah. wherever that is, yeah. you go to a different environment, right? It, it's you have to sort of you know unlearn a lot of things sure, to, sure. to bring your best, right? So yeah, we've seen uh, most managers at Zoho have spent so many years in the company, have learned from it, have built sure. relationships with people, and they end up becoming uh, leaders who, who, who manage projects, manage people, of course. Uh, but yeah, for the most part, I think as a company, 
we are, we are fairly flat in the sense there's a lot of uh, autonomous ideas and, yep. and and leaderships that work because at our size and with 50 plus applications so many teams yep. there's just not one person who can look into any any function or any sure. for all right i mean just imagine running sales or marketing or any of these functions for all the products and how how can you even be an expert in 50 products you just yep. cannot be right there's so yep. much happening in every team every day there's so many releases new announcements new integrations what not it's so hard to keep up yeah uh, with everything right but uh, when people spend so much time with us or they 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 become better leaders they start to manage projects and teams and that's how the company has grown to 10000 people today yeah no that's powerful uh, Praval, anything I didn't ask you today? I, I I know with you we could go on, I'd say for ninety more minutes. Not not a full day longer. We'd get tired of each other, but ninety more minutes we could do it. But anything I didn't ask you or that you wanted to touch on that I didn't uh, bring up today. This has been again. We're talking to Praval Singh, who's uh, vice president of marketing at Zoho. Uh, great conversation. But I want to give you the last word. Anything I didn't talk to you about or anything you wanted to mention? Feel free. Uh. One thing that I would like to add is, you know, when we think of companies, when you think of, and then this extends beyond just technology companies, right? We we focus a lot on on capital, right? yes. raising capital, building capital, uh, companies' net worth, things like that, right? Now, what we have seen, and and we've been at peace with this, is for us, capital is more around, more about human capital, mm. which is around uh, things like. building the know how yes. capability nurturing talent right how many people have we nurtured in the in 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 this ecosystem of of being in business for over two decades right now that's the capital we 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 look at and that makes us happier than the monetary capital that we typically talk about right uh, how many people have we trained in different skills mm. right now some of them many of them continue to work with us but there are enough people who who've gone out to do different sure. things including starting companies and what not right now that's the kind of capital that we talk about when we talk about capital right for us that's a very important factor you know that's our uh, definition of spiritual economics mm. or zoonomics mm. right so that's the important thread i would say that ties everything together of our belief our definition of capital which is a lot different from the traditional definition, yeah. uh, definition yeah. of capital So yeah, with that thank you so much, Ramon. Thank you oh, for having me on the show, and and uh, wish you a, 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 a great year ahead. Uh, and hope you. we we'll get to see each other in person this year. Indeed, but not in the USA. You know, for me, I don't want to meet you in the USA. I don't want to do that because <laughs> I want to travel. <laughs> So you 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 welcome here. Thank you. No, I appreciate it. But listen, ladies and gentlemen, again, if you're hearing the sound of my voice, watching this video, looking at this article, definitely give us a review, give us a like, give us a comment, give us a share. Let Verbal know you're hearing and and what he shared has helped you. But once again, my name is Ramon Ray, founder of smarthustle.com, and you can see more discussions like this at smarthustle.com.